I think the PCSK9 inhibitors are a game changer, not only for FH, you know, heterozygous FH, but for the people who have residual, severe, mixed hyperlipidemia and ongoing risk. So are these new PCSK9 inhibitors game changers? Um, I think they are for people with familial hypercholesterolemia, you know, genetic disorders with really high cholesterol levels their whole lives. For the first time, we're getting LDL levels in the 70s on these patients, uh, you know, on top of background maximal statin therapy. So I think it's, it's a game changer for these people who die prematurely in their 30s and 40s of heart attack and stroke. So for them, yes. Well, it's been several months now, and we see that we've got the PCSK9 inhibitors, and it still represents a terrific set of scientific discoveries that have led to a relevant introduction of a new therapy for clinical practice. But what does it really mean practically? Well, not too much just yet, because there's still some anxiety about the agents, about the indication. The fuzziness of the FDA label gives everyone some pause about in whom and for how long and for what endpoint. But I think we would be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that cost is a very real consideration for so many practitioners and for patients. The evidence that we have from the studies is that there is profound lipid lowering of about 60% on top of what's achieved with maximum tolerated dose of statin. So that is a massive effect. In terms of outcomes, they're relatively modest numbers, but the evidence again is very reassuring that there's evidence of potential benefit in the limited outcome studies that have been done to date. We have preliminary data for cardiovascular outcomes just on small groups of people. It looks quite positive, 50% reductions. But we have four big outcomes trials ongoing, and I think we really need the data from those trials, not just to see how much cardiovascular risk is reduced, but also what's the adverse event profile. Because at the end of the day, we need that net benefit for our patients to really figure out the value of you know, what patients are going to benefit from it. So the first of those trials is expected to end um, next year. For the broad application, I am pleased that the community has said, well, wait a minute. We love the science. We think we have a potential tool. But let's wait just a little bit longer and get the outcomes data if we're going to move forward with expensive therapies. And there are many corollaries that exist in medicine right now regarding expensive therapies. At least let it be because we know not only does it move the target, but it improves the outcomes. We're almost there, halfway there. <laughs> So let's cover the rest of the distance and then we'll know. Really the most challenging issues for the PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, which there are two now approved, are the cost. And payers are, you know, struggling with how to pay for these because they have to pay for a lot of other drugs and, and have other priorities. So I think um, there is a pre-authorization process required by everybody for this and it's just kind of working through that. You know, first of all, properly selecting the patients uh, you know, people with familial hypercholesterolemia, statin intolerant people with cardiovascular disease, uh, and then going through the, the paperwork of getting these drugs.